Okay, so this is a floor that I was done maybe, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, something like that. And uh, it's falling apart. As you can see here, it's all cracked. And it just, just the only thing holding this down is gravity. So I'm gonna rip this up, install some Vitra, and put some new tile down. But I'm only going up to here. This part here, she doesn't want to do this part, so I'm just gonna do, replace this. So I'm gonna put a threshold here. I'm gonna put a threshold over there and no time. So this is my project for the next few days. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So it's not adhered to the floor at all. Okay, so the only thing holding this down is gravity. Okay, so the threshold's gonna go on top of this tile to cover that. And the, they're gonna be putting vitro on the plywood and, tie, and new tile. So that's how I'm gonna handle that. It's the only way to do it. She doesn't wanna rip out that floor over there.
So anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so I took up all the tile. It came out clean. Just a couple of spots where the thin set was trying to hold on, but just wasn't doing that at all. So I'm not going to clean this up. Uh, I just to make sure that it's all good and sturdy. And then I'm going to install some detail. Okay, so it's all cleaned up. And it's like there was barely, you can barely tell that there was a ever uh, top floor on here. So, all vacuumed, all cleaned, and I'm going to install some Ditra. This Ditra, made by Schluter, it's an uncoupling membrane, and what this does is, you cement this with this felt part, onto the uh, plywood with a polymer modified thin set. Um, I'm going to be using, in this case, 253 Laticrete Gold and the trail I'm going to be using is this one here. It's 11 64ths by 11 64ths square notch trail and this is Ashley a Schluter Dietra trial. This is what uh, Schluter recommends to install the membrane. And when you install a tile on this membrane, you use an unmodified thin set. And the reason you do that is because the tile, when it's installed on this, doesn't actually, the thin set doesn't actually adhere to this plastic. It gets locked in to these waffles here which have like a dovetail um, if you can see it somewhere here you can't really see it but it's like a dovetail in here so what happens is when the Thin set cures, it gets locked into these waffles. And because there's these ridges behind here, what that does is it uncouples the floor from the tile floor from the subfloor. So if there's any movement in the plywood or whatever, lateral movement, and it will not transfer through the Ditra to the tile because of these voids. The Ditra can deform and not transfer the tile, I mean the movement to the tile. That's how that works. And it's a very good system and I've used it for years and years and years and I've never had a problem with it. Just want to make sure when you put this down that you use a good quality polymer modified thin set to adhere the D truss to the subfloor. These come in uh, 50 foot rolls, they come in uh, 150 foot rolls, and they come in 340 or 330 foot rolls. So that's what I'm going to do now.
So I'll cut the rest of this in. Okay, so I got the uh, heat roll cut in. Now I'm going to cement it down. To install the Ditra, you need a Ditra trowel, and that's 11 64ths by 11 64ths square notch. A wooden float. This is just an old wooden float or even put two piece of two by four to smooth it in. Back of the water, give me a thin set. And the thin set you're going to use on here, because this is plywood, is going to be a Palma modified thin set. So you could use um, Ultraflex 2, um, you know, good quality polymer modified thin set. What you don't want to use is a low quality polymer modified, modified thin set. If you are paying six, seven, even eight, nine, or ten bucks a bag, it is not uh, a good quality thin set. And then if this were on concrete, you could use an unmodified thin set. Uh, but because it's on plywood, we're going to be using a polymer modified thin set. So I mix my thin set. You want to mix it a little soupier, a little looser than it would be for installing tile. Yes, but you still want to be able to hold a, a notch on the, um, you know, the, the notches of the trowel. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll some of this back. I'm going to clean the floor with a damp sponge. And that serves two purposes. It cleans dust off the substrate. And because it's plywood, it'll um, stop the plywood from prematurely absorbing the moisture out of the thin set. So it actually serves two functions. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so that's just to clean it and damp the plywood. There was no standing water. Next, I'm going to use the flat side of the trowel to key the thin stud in. Once you have it keyed in with the flat side of the trowel, you're going to flip the trowel over and then spread your thin set with the notch side of the trowel. So you get all the uh, ridges of the thin set uh, so that when you roll the thin set and the uh, detra back, it'll lay into the thin set and get bonded to 
the flaw. So, see that the, it's looser than normal, but it still holds a notch and a trowel. And then, when you pick it up, when you pick this up, you want to see that good coverage. See how it has good coverage like that? You want to see that on the back of the, on the back of the Ditra. So now I'm going to do the rest. Finish the rest of it. Okay, so the D is all down. Next step is tile. Okay, so this is the tile I'm using. It's going to go on a diagonal. It's going to be an oak threshold here. Cut that in, and there's going to be a marble threshold over there. So I'll lay down some tiles so I get some measurements. So I get lucky because I can start with a full tile under here, which will actually be a four and a half, and I get a full tile under the radiator. Over here, I have to start with this size piece here from this line. And then I'll get a piece this big and a piece that big. 
and it's a pretty simple layout. Um, so and that's how I'm going to do it. Now sometimes I'm going to cut this one on diagonal like this. And a lot of tiles you can just scrape and snap. So I'm going to line it up. Corner. Simple as that. Okay, so diagonal cuts can be challenging if you don't know a simple trick. Now, to measure these cuts, I mean, you would have to do a ton of measuring and then get a square and it's, it can be difficult to be able to measure this cut here. So, the simple way to do it is you make a template. And to get the size of the template, See this line here from this corner to this corner and then on the opposite tile directly across same thing corner to corner so you have that dimension then you get a piece of scrap plywood cardboard whatever and you cut it exactly to those dimensions from there to there And that'll give you, that'll make it easy to make the mark, the cuts, and I'll show you how. So I need to make this corner cut here. This tile has to go around there. So how do I mark that? I get a tile, put it directly on top of this tile. Exactly on top. And I get my template. Push it up against the cabinet. Like that. And I mark this line here. Right there. Now, if you look at this, you can see there's like a little jog here. I'm going to go like this, put it like that. From there to there. And I'm going to make this mark here. Now, now, now I have that line, and I have this line. Now I need to get the lines that go this way. So how do I do that? I pick up the style and move it over like this. Like that. First it was this tile, now it's this tile. 
and I'm gonna do the same thing. Put this over here like this with that little notches there. See that? Right there. I'll make this mark here. And then I'll move it over here. Like that. make this mark here. So now I have the mark for those cuts. Now I'm going to cut that and put it. In. Okay, so I cut that tile. Let's see if it fits. Okay, so I dry laid those in and I picked them up and I numbered them and I'm going to cement them down. Now, because I'm installing tile on Schluter Dietra, uh, I'm using a, an unmodified thin set. And uh, this is, uh, what this means is there's no polymers in it. It's not enhanced with anything, it's just a, uh, an unmodified tin set. And the reason you do that is because uh, when you have two impervious surfaces going together, uh, the moisture between the tile and the DITRA uh, would get trapped. And uh, a polymer modified tin set needs to dry uh, by evaporation. The tin set, I mean the water in the thin set uh, needs to escape uh, or be absorbed by something for the thin set to dry. And because the tile is impervious and the uh, detra is impervious, the moisture can only escape through the grout line. So what happens is it takes a very long time for the thin set to dry and cure. Uh, unmodified thin set, on the other hand, dries via hydration. Uh, in other words, the uh, the uh, water in the uh, uh, thin set is consumed uh, by the process of the, the curing process of the thin set, and um, th uh, so that the moisture does not need to escape out of the um, grout lines. It just remains uh, in the uh, between the tiles and is consumed by the the curing process and the longer uh, the, the moisture remains the stronger the thin set becomes. Uh, you can see that I'm kneeling on the tile here. The tile that I'm kneeling on there, those first two rows, are not cemented down. They're just laid in there dry and uh, when I'm doing a diagonal uh, floor. Typically I'll do this, I'll cut in a, a section of uh, the floor and then uh, I'll pick up a section, cement it down and then move over to the next section. It's just an easy way for me to get started and then once I get uh, past that point I'll probably just uh, uh, you know uh, spread and lay as I'm going along and you're gonna see me picking up some tiles a little in a little bit and you'll um, see what I mean.
so um, while I'm spreading the th thin set here you'll see that I'm you know uh, what I'm doing is using the back side of the trowel at first to fill all the voids and waffles in the um, in the um, Ditra and then I go back and uh, I spread more thin set uh, to on the with the no notch side of the trowel to uh, gauge the thin set out to the correct um, thickness and at the very end you'll see that I try and uh, spread the thin set so all the ridges of the trowel are all going in the um, same direction now this is not something that I do just because uh, I think it looks good it's actually being shown that uh, Troweling out your thin set so all the ridges of the thin set go in one direction will actually uh, improve uh, coverage on the back of the top because you can uh, more evenly collapse those ridges uh, under the tile, uh, covering the tile, uh, getting better coverage under the tile. If you have swirls and if you have um, the ridges going in different directions, a lot of times uh, you can't uh, get uh, as good coverage because you can't completely collapse the ridges of the um, thin set. So you'll notice that I am back bothering every tile. This is something uh, that I uh, normally do and uh, the reason for that is uh, many of these uh, ceramic or porcelain tiles have a pattern on the back and some of them are quite deep not always but many times and uh, even if they're not you still want a back body tile and what that does it keys the thin set into the back of the tile and when you place it into the thin set you actually get better coverage I mean it's pretty obvious what what it does but um, and this is also especially true for um, travertine or marbles which have a lot of voids in the back of the tile that you want to fill before you set them into the thin set and you can try it for yourself I put a tile into the thin set uh, without back bottering and lift it up and see what it looks like and then do one uh, you know back butter one put it in and lift it up and see what that looks like you will notice that there is significant more uh, thin set on uh, the back by the tile than there is um, on one that you haven't made back by the
Okay, so that's uh, the floor. Tomorrow, well, I'm just gonna put a threshold over by the door over there, that oak threshold, I don't know if you can see it from there, but uh, oak threshold, there's a marble threshold here. And tomorrow, grout. Time to grout. Because I have a um, couple of um, videos that uh, explain in detail how to grout, I'm not going to do that here. Um, I'm just going you know, to really just fast forward this video through the grouting process. But basically, uh, what you do is you mix up your grout according to the directions of the uh, manufacturer. Now we're talking about uh, a, a cementitious grout here. Um, so you mix it according to the directions and then you uh, use a rubber float uh, like I have here and you uh, spread the you know you put a good amount of uh, grout on the floor you uh, then spread the grout forcing it the grout into the grout lines with the float uh, you know pushing it in with the grout at a with the grout float at a low angle and then you go o go back over that area uh, with the grout over uh, at a high angle to remove all the excess and that, that's what I'm, I'm doing here and basically and then you um, uh, use some uh, water with a sponge uh, to clean it up and uh, but as I said uh, I have a couple of um, uh, videos that go into great detail on how to do this so I'm, I'm not going to repeat it here After you've got a section grout and then you obviously you need to clean it up and wash it. And uh, just basically you can use a, uh, uh, a sponge, a grout sponge, and you're going to wring out, out as much water as possible. And you're going to wash it once, you're going to let it haze over, and then you're going to rinse it off. And uh, like I said, all these details. Uh, uh, another video I have which goes into great detail and you can find that on in the how to playlist on my channel. Okay so the floor is all grouted. Now I'm gonna put this threshold over here. Okay, so this bevel here is, um, we need to cut this back so that it's flush. So I'm going to cut it back to about there. Okay, so I'm going to cut that back and now I'm going to install the threshold. Okay, so I'm going to measure it. Okay, now I'm going to cut that. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm gonna cut it. Let's see if it fits. Perfect. Okay, so I always want to pre-drill oak. That's it, now I'm going to caulk it and I'll be all done. I'm finished off with stain, so you're going to make sure you cover it so you don't get any stains on it.
So that's done. Now I'm just going to second rinse the floor and I'll be completely done with it. Done. We're going to re sand those oak floors and um, refinish them so they'll coat that threshold at that time.